Welcome to Boundless Word. As we hear God's holy word, and I invite you to take a walk with me through one of the forest preserves here in northeastern Illinois as we hear God's holy word. And in today's reading from the book of Acts, we are going to hear how the gospel literally brings life. And that is true not only spiritually, but physically in this case. We're going to see one of the miracles, one of the few miracles that are actually recorded in the book of Acts that is a result of the power of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the power of the Holy Spirit working through the means of grace in people's lives. And so it is an encouragement to us to hear God's word and then to put it into effect in our own lives as well. So let's begin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. After the uproar ceased, Paul sent for the disciples, and after encouraging them, he said farewell and departed for Macedonia. When he had gone through those regions and had given them much encouragement, he came to Greece. There he spent three months, and when a plot was made against him by the Jews, as he was about to set sail for Syria, he decided to return through Macedonia. Sopater the Berean, son of Pyrrhus, accompanied him, and of the Thessalonians, Aristarchus and Secundus, and Gaius of Derby, and Timothy, and the Asians, Tychicus and Trophimus. These went on ahead and were waiting for us at Troas. But we sailed away from Philippi after the days of unleavened bread, and in five days we came to them at Troas, where we stayed for seven days. On the first day of the week, we were gathered together to break bread. Paul talked with them, intending to depart on the next day, and he prolonged his speech until midnight. There were many lamps in the upper room where they were gathered, and a young man named Eutychus, sitting at the window, sank into a deep sleep as Paul talked still longer, and being overcome by sleep, he fell down from the third story and was taken up dead. But when Paul went down and bent over him and taking him in his arms, said, Do not be alarmed, for his life is in him. And when Paul had gone up and had broken bread and eaten, he conversed with them a long while until daybreak, and so departed. And they took the youth away alive, and were not a little comforted. But going ahead to the ship, we set sail for Assus, intending to take Paul aboard there, for so he had arranged, intending himself to go by land. And when he met us at Assus, we took him on board and went to Mytilene. And sailing from there, we came the following day opposite Chios. The next day we touched at Samus, and the day after that we went to Miletus. For Paul had decided to sail past Ephesus so that he might not have to spend time in Asia, for he was hastening to be at Jerusalem, if possible, on the day of Pentecost. Now from Miletus, he sent to Ephesus and called the elders of the church to come to him, and they came to him, and he said to them, You yourselves know how long I lived among you the whole time from the first day that I set foot in Asia, serving the Lord with all humility and with tears and with trials that happened to me through the plots of the Jews, how I did not shrink from declaring to you anything that was profitable in teaching you in public and from house to house, testifying both to Jews and to Greeks of repentance toward God and of faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. And now, behold, I am going to Jerusalem, constrained by the Spirit, not knowing what will happen to me there, except that the Holy Spirit testifies to me in every city that imprisonment and afflictions await me. But I do not account my life of any value, nor as precious to myself, if only I may finish my course in the ministry that I received from the Lord Jesus, to testify to the gospel of the grace of God. And now, behold, I know that none of you among whom I have gone about proclaiming the kingdom will see my face again. Therefore I testify to you this day that I am innocent of the blood of you all, for I did not shrink from declaring to you the whole counsel of God. Pay careful attention to yourselves, do all the flock in which the Holy Spirit has made you overseers, to care for the church of God, which he obtained with his own blood. I know that after my departure, fierce wolves will come in among you, not sparing the flock, and from among your own selves there will arise men speaking twisted things to draw away the disciples after them. Therefore be alert. Remembering that for three years I did not cease day or night to admonish everyone with tears. And now I, command, I commend you to God and to the word of His grace, 
which is able to build you up and to give you the inheritance among all those who are sanctified. I coveted no one's silver or gold or apparel. You yourselves know that these hands ministered to my necessities and to those who were with me. In all things I have shown you that by working hard in this way, we must help the weak and remember the words of the Lord Jesus, how he himself said, It is more blessed to give than to receive. And when he had said these things, he knelt down and prayed with them all. And there was much weeping on the part of all. They embraced Paul and kissed him, being sorrowful, most of all because of the word he had spoken, that he would not see his, they would not see his face again. And they accompanied him to the ship. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his namesake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And as we have prayed a psalm now, let's turn in our specific prayers to God on this walk. Father in heaven, hear our prayers for the sake of Jesus. Jesus often would go off into the wilderness and pray and to be with you. And so here we are, Lord, out in your creation, talking to you and listening to you. We pray that you will give us courage to never ever give up or be afraid to proclaim the gospel which brings life literally spiritual as well as physical and leads to eternal life in heaven because of what Jesus Christ has done for us on the cross in the empty grave. We pray that you will touch our hearts, heal all of those who are in need of your healing touch, and strengthen your church that we may always, always be proclaiming the good news about Jesus, in whose name we pray, and as he has taught us, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. And I pray that you will keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Thanks for joining me on this walk today as we hear God speak to us and we have spoken to him in prayer. I pray that you will now be richly blessed by God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen.